Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be this evening, today. Uh, we thank God for you on this Sabbath, and we thank God for you that you're here locally with us, as well as uh, you joining us via Facebook. Uh, we're glad to have you here today, uh, and we're going to go ahead and get started with a quick word of prayer, and then we've got a special treat for you uh, once we're uh, done with that. So just let us pray. Lord, we thank you again for another Sabbath day. We thank you for the foregoing of the week, Lord. We pray that that week has been prosperous. And Lord, and we pray as we rest today, Lord, we, we, we rest in you, Father, and that we rest in your word and we rest in your, in your principles, Father, as we, as, we, as we look, Lord, for more insight, Lord, as we look to gain, Lord, as we look to strengthen our, our walk with you. Be with us today, Lord. Keep us in your care, and we'll love you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So this morning we will be blessed by our ambassador singing angels. <laughs> They're going to bless us with a, uh, with a song today. Uh, so as they come forward, uh, we're going to put the words on the screen so you can join along. And please join along where you're at and join along here locally as well. Ladies. more stands in. <laughs> on just a minute while we adjust the camera. Sorry, Rhonda. Did you turn this down so you can talk? You should be. Okay. I can just... Don't put this on so y'all can understand everything I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my head might my dude might move in and didn't turn down right there. No, I better take that off hat because you can't understand. I heard somebody on television the other day that was speaking through this mask. I thought, what are they saying? Anyway, good to see you all here. And that music, fantastic. Do you know these young ladies wrote the last two stanzas to that thing? That's all original. That's great. We're, I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I'm not going to take a lot of time. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Souls for letting me take part of his sermon time and giving a sermonette. And it'll be short, like sermonettes are supposed to be. It was good to see everybody here. Welcome to our international audience. I want to. Uh, give you four reasons 
why God does not always heal immediately. Four reasons why he doesn't always heal immediately. Uh, because, you know, we want it now. In fact, if you're like me, you want it yesterday. That's just kind of normal. And I'm going to give you a number of scriptures. You, you may want to write them down or may want to just listen. Some of them you may want to turn to. But here's what the Bible tells us. When Jesus knew it, this is Matthew 12, 15. Well, I'll start in verse 14. The Pharisees went out and they took a, had a counsel to destroy him. And when he knew that, he withdrew himself from there and great multitudes... One multitude is between twelve and 15,000. Great multitudes, how big was this crowd? Followed him, and he healed them all. Now, how did everybody get healed? First of all, it had to be instant, because otherwise they wouldn't have known that he healed them all. Uh, so how, how did this happen? Well, if Jesus walked through that door back there, he wouldn't look like the pictures. But let's say somehow the Holy Spirit revealed to us that that was Jesus. And if you knew for a fact that was Jesus... Everybody in this room would get healed just like that. You know why? Your faith would be so tremendous. These people didn't know Jesus was the Messiah, but they knew he was a prophet. They knew he was a great man. And they said, if I could just get to that man, Jesus of Nazareth, I know I'll be healed. Some people have made fun of Oral Roberts when he used to tell people, come expecting a miracle. But if you're not expecting, you don't receive. Actually, that was wisdom. You have to expect to receive. So, so these people knew they'd be healed, and every single person got healed. Now, what about today? Well, Hebrews 13, verse 8, says that Jesus is the same today as he was yesterday. And we're familiar with the scripture where it says he's no respecter of persons, Romans 2, 11. So even though I'm a Gentile, these people were Jewish, I can claim healing as well as anybody can. And he's the same today as he was 2,000 years ago. So, number one, the very first reason why some people don't receive their healing immediately or at all is lack of faith. That's one of the reasons people don't receive it. Now, that's obvious, but i got three more reasons after that. But number one is a lack of faith. Now, in chapter 9 of Matthew, it says in verse 22, he saw this woman, and you know the story. She had that hemorrhage. And he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. Without faith, you don't have that guarantee. But she had faith. All right, then in verse 27, here were two other men that had a need. And so they came to him crying, saying, Lord, said, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, he didn't just heal them right then. They, these two men came to him, and this is what he said. This is verse 28. Do you believe that I'm able to do this? Why didn't he just say, well, look, I've, I've got all this great power. I'll just heal you. No, he brought him into the house. He set him down. Maybe he could see something in their eyes where they weren't really totally full of faith. That might have been. Maybe he could see something. So he wanted to talk to them. I never just simply say, come here and I'll pray for you. I don't have any gift of healing. To my knowledge, I've never prayed for a gift of healing. So when somebody says, would you pray for me? I don't just say, yeah, come here and I'll pray for you. I don't do that. I sit them down and I go through the scriptures and I build up their faith because faith comes by hearing the word. And so when I get their faith build, built up, I've seen people healed instantly that way. So that's one of the reasons why people don't receive it. Do you believe I can do this? They, they said yes. And then he said this in verse 29, according to your faith be it unto you. And they were healed, so they must have had faith. So I've used that scripture many times to get the monkey off my back. If, if you come to me and say, hey, I, I, I want to be healed, and if you don't do it, I'm going to tell people you didn't succeed. Hey, wait a minute, it's according to your faith. And if I get their faith built up, where they expect to receive, I've seen, I've lost count of all the people that I've seen healed that way. Back one page, chapter 8 and verse 13, he said this, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done to thee, as you believed. So the reason that some people don't receive their healing immediately is because they lack faith. So that's number one. Now let's go to number two. Number two and I'm going to turn to Numbers 12 and actually read something here to you. Are there any questions at this point? Number two is this. God wants us sometimes to learn something first. You say, well, what do you want us to learn? 
Well, let me give you an illustration. Well, first of all, let me quote the scripture. It's, it's Numbers 12, verses 13 and 14. Verse 13, Miriam had leprosy. And this is what Moses prayed. Now, this is, sounds like your prayer. Listen to this. Heal her now. <laughs> oh, God, I beseech thee. Right now. I want it right now. And what did God say? Quarantine her. Put her in quarantine for at least a week, and then she'll be healed. So they had to wait for her to be healed. Why didn't God just heal just like There's a reason why, and I won't go into it now. I don't have time to go into it. But there are reasons sometimes. For example, if you came to me and said, man, my finger's hurting terrible. Keith, would you pray for me? It's hurting awful. So I, I lay hands on you, and I pray for you, and you walk away, and it's still hurting. Is it possible that the reason God didn't take away the pain is because you haven't looked at the finger to see there's a great big old thorn in your finger? Let's get rid of the thorn, put a little bit of Neosporin or alcohol or something on it, then I'll pray for you, and you'll be fine. But, in fact, the body heals itself. You don't need prayer if you, if you just get the thorn out. So here's the thing. Sometimes God doesn't heal you immediately because he's wanting you to learn something. There's something that you're doing wrong or something you have done wrong. And I fi finally figured out what caused this. Uh, back in November, I went to that place called I Fly, and this guy spinning me around real quick like that. And, brother, I was drunk. And I was dizzy. And, uh, oh, and that's when it started. So in December, I started noticing badly. And then here a few weeks ago, I got to where I couldn't even drive a car. I can talk and I can read my Bible, thank God. As long as I read my Bible, I'm okay. Maybe I talk too much, but I can talk. All right, so God sometimes wants us to learn something. Number three, and this comes from Hebrews trap chapter 5. By the way, I meant to say and I forgot, and I apologize. I've received text messages from many of you and from even people that I haven't met uh, who are watching this today live. Uh, that they're praying for me, and I appreciate that. It, we're told in the Bible we should pray for one another so that we can be healed. So I appreciate all the prayers, and God does promise to heal, and my healing is absolutely assured. But you you pray, and I appreciate it very much. So number, number three, the third reason that sometimes God does not heal you just instantaneously is he wants you to learn to have compassion on other people because then you can understand it. In Hebrews chapter 5, in verse 1, it, it talks about the high priest, but it applies to anybody. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men pertaining to the things of God. Verse 2, who can have compassion? Sometimes it's hard to have compassion on somebody when you haven't been through what they've been through. But when you've gone through it, and somebody else is going through it, and they say, nobody knows what I've been through, and you say, brother, I do. I do, because I've been there. And it may not be a sickness. It could be a situation where there's death in the family, and you know what that's like. So the high priest, he's talking about Christ can have compassion, but he's talking about the Levitical high priest. He can have compassion, and on them that are out of the way, they're, they've gotten off, out of the way of God, gotten off the path, for that he himself also is compassed or surrounded with infirmity. He's a human being. He has infirmity. Verse 5 says, So also Christ, Christ what? Verse 7, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears, you ever been there? Unto him who was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, verse 8, yet he learned, this is Jesus, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So you haven't been through anything that Jesus doesn't know what you're going through, and he can have compassion on you. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto who? All those who obey him. So number three is when you've gone through things, sometimes God will let you experience things. Imagine Miriam having leprosy for a whole week scared and nervous and can't sleep at night I guess in pain and God said no it's going to be a while number four now this is real simple we're told in James 5 16 pray for one another that ye may be healed he didn't say thou thou is singular ye all of us we pray for one another so that we can all be healed I was in a church one time years ago where only the ministers could lay hands on the sick 
they didn't know Mark 16, verses 17 and 18, which says, Believers, that's you, shall lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. So pray for one another. And you don't have to always lay hands. When you're at home, you just pray, Lord, heal this person. But we should pray for one another. So sometimes, the reason God doesn't just heal us instantly like that, he wants to get the whole church involved and have compassion on, on one person because Paul said when one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. When your little finger hurts, your whole body aches, as it, as it were. And so we're the body of Christ, and we're supposed to have compassion one of another. Any questions? There's a comment online. Okay, I'll take the comment. Our friend Carl said, what about Mark 9, 24? And straight away the father of the child cried and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou, help thou my unbelief. Yeah, here was a man who was very honest. He had faith, but yet, like a lot of people, he was he was a little bit doubtful, had a little bit of doubt. And you can understand why, because nobody could get him. He went to the disciples. They couldn't do it. So he thought, well, is Jesus going to be able to? He had a question there. Mark 9, 24, he said, help thou mine unbelief. It's a good thing sometimes to pray. Lord, I do believe, but help me where I'm missing it. Maybe I'm not at 100%. Maybe I'm at 85%. God, help me with the, the rest of it so I have total faith. All right, well. What about uh -huh. that? Yeah, fasting, fasting and praying, and, 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 and that's that's certainly scriptural, where you can fast and pray for other people. In fact, when Jesus fasted for 40 days, he wasn't just doing it for himself. He was doing it for his ministry and all the people he'd eventually be praying for. I'm out of time. So I want to thank Dr. Souls for giving me a few minutes here, taking some time from his sermon. And now uh, I'll introduce the Dean of Students of Ambassador Christian College, who will be giving the message today, Dr. Stephen Souls. I'm going to put this up there. I'm gonna, okay, yeah, you got to raise that. Up. i got to raise this. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your help. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Slough, for that uh, that sermonette. Um, we appreciate that. Appreciate hearing you over the airwaves once again. Um, that is definitely a blessing, and we are continued as a body um, to pray for full restoration uh, for your body. So, um, so with that. Um, I wanted to uh, wanted to talk about a topic today um, that I pray puts a smile on your face. And I want to talk about today, I want to talk about biblical happiness. I want to talk about biblical happiness. As we reflect on, on the issues of today, you know, we're living in a pandemic and we're, we're adjusting to a different way of life. Most of us have experienced a range of emotions. And, and one of those that you may have experienced um, the least is, is happiness. Maybe you haven't been as happy as you have normally been because of your life and how it's been restricted and how you can't go do this and how you can't hug grandma and you can't see you know, the, your loved ones. It's, it's been almost a year now where we have, have lived under some type of physical restriction or, or travel restriction or, or even contact restriction. Um, restrictions that have, have, have chipped away, um, not only chipped away at us physically uh, because we've been more confined in the homes and, and maybe not exercising as much, um, but also, it's chipped away at our mental health um, to include our happiness. Um, many of us uh, have lost loved ones uh, during this pandemic, um, know of someone that has lost uh, a loved one, and, uh, and it's been an emotional toll. Um, and it's been an emotional toll 
on not only us, but the families, um, as we're not able to to commune with that with that family member or that friend or, or whoever that may be that that has lost that loved one uh, like we do when um, when somebody passes away. Um, and, and and we've lost normal contact. We've lost normal contact um, with family and friends. Contact that has been proven by doctors and others that we need as humans as part of a balanced emotional life. You know, we, we, we need to be able to interact and talk with each other. And, 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 you know, there's, there's people, they're huggers, where they, where they, you know, they've got to hug somebody. And, and you know, they, and just being in the room with people, you know, there's a lot of people that live alone. And if they don't get out, they don't see anybody. You know, if they, they don't, if nobody comes to see them. And that begins to take a toll on you. That begins to take a toll on you. So, so the million dollar question is, how, how do we improve our happiness given our current living situation, given our current living arrangements? How, how do we improve our happiness? First of all, I want to define what happiness is. I want to define what happiness is. Happiness is a state of well-being and contentment a pleasurable or satisfying experience. That's the definition of happiness, a state of well-being and containment and a pleasurable or satisfying experience. But you have to ask, the, you have to ask yourself the question, what does happiness mean to you? And how do you go about obtaining that happiness? Um, We're as happy as we think we are. Right, right. And, 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 that's, and that's why I said, you know, that, that's a question you have to ask yourself because, you know, you've got to figure out where you're at and figure out where you want to go. A synonym for happiness is beatitude. And when I heard that, it made me think of the Sermon on the Mount. It made me think of the Sermon on the Mount. It made me think of this section that defines the beatitudes, which is Matthew uh, chapter 5, verses 3 through 10 as well as Luke uh, chapter 6, verses 20 through 23. I want to take a look at Matthew's account today. Another word for happiness is blessed. Come on, come on. There it is. There it is. That's, uh, you you're still on my thunder, <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. That's, uh, that's exactly where we're headed. That is exactly where we're headed. Um, as a backdrop to, to, to chapter 5, uh, Jesus has just assembled the 12 disciples. Um, Matthew, four, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 says, Jesus went all around Galilee teaching, preaching, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So Jesus has just done these, these, these great works. He's got the 12, he's, he's assembled the 12, and he's been demonstrating by teaching, preaching, and healing others. It's, it's after these series of events where we come to chapter 5, um, where we find Jesus separating himself up in a mountain and his disciples come to see him. Here in verse 3, Jesus begins to teach his disciples, not in the typical form of parables, but in just, just regular plain English. And he starts off the verse by saying, blessed. Verse 3 starts off with blessed, blessed. The Greek word there is makairos. The definition of blessed is, is fortunate, well-off, and happy. Those are the definitions of blessed. Fortunate, well-off, and happy. When given the opportunity to share with you like I am today, I like to pronounce a blessing over your life. That's why I say at the end of my at the end of, 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 of my speeches and my conversations, I say be blessed. After every message, that's just a simple pro proclamation that I pray you walk in as I take my seat and as we go our separate ways. I'd like to do, and what I like to do in this regard is I'd like to. For these next few verses, I want to just swap the word blessed 
with the word happy. They mean the same. I, I, you know, I, I, just want, I just want to read it in that context. So verse 3 says, happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There's a reference that I want us to go to uh, for this verse, and it's, it is Psalm 1, verse 1. So if we could just turn back a moment. Uh, when, when, I, when I seen the, the reference, I, I, I read it and, 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 and felt it applicable uh, to bring up. And Psalm 1, verse 1 says, Happy is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law he does meditate day and night. There is happiness in meditating in his word. There's happiness in meditating in his word. There's one more reference I want us to go. There's a couple more in Psalms that I want us to go to as well. Uh, Psalm 32. Psalm 32 in verse 1. And remember, we're, we're, and remember we're, we're replacing blessed with happy today. So verse 1 says, happy is whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. So now we're finding happiness in the forgiveness of sin. So now we have happiness in meditating in his word. We have happiness now in the forgiveness of sin. I want us to go to one more scripture in Psalms, and that's Psalm 119. Psalm 119. And we're going to go to verse 1. And verse 1 says, Happy are the undefiled in the way whose walk, who walk in the law of the Lord. So now there's happiness walking in the law of the Lord, which is his word, and in the forgiveness of sin. And in the forgiveness of sin. So just in those three verses, we found that we're, we're, we're starting to build our happiness up. We're starting to build it up because I know I would love to be happy in the forgiveness of sin because we were all guilty of it. And, and in asking that forgiveness, there should be, we should find happiness in that because we know that we serve a God that can forgive us. So let's go back to Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And verse 4 says, Happy are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Verse 5, happy are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Verse 6 says, happy are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Verse 7, happy are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Verse 8. Happy are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Amen. Verse 9. Happy are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. And finally as we come to verse 10. It says happy. Blessed. Happy are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven as you process this passage of scripture i want you to think about the happiness that jesus had just proclaimed over your life all the all, all those scriptures that jesus did we just went through are are proclamations of happiness because he wants you to be happy if you're, you know, if you're poor in spirit. Be happy if you're mourning. Be happy if you're meek. Be happy if you're merciful. Be happy in the meditating of his word. Think of these scriptures as an introduction 
to the Bible study that Jesus has just started here in chapter 5. So he sits the disciples down, and, and, and the first nine things he says, he's telling them to be happy. He's telling them to be happy. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Mourn. Um, mourn means uh, I don't know what this one means. I didn't study this word out, but the the, the, the common mean is to, to mourn. right is is to have yeah. What kind of mourning do we do? Are we day to day? Are we day? Well, you know, great question. You know, currently, you know we're finding ourselves mourning for the lives that are being lost every day. Um, you know, if, 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 if you so choose to indulge in that. We uh, mourn our own sin. Amen. Amen. That, that's, that, that's a great point. point the, 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 the comment was made, we should mourn our own sin. And you're absolutely right. Sin of others yeah. As well. Right. Yes, sir. Feel guilt. To mourn, lament, or to feel guilt is the yeah. definition of mourn. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. The guilt is there, but you need to feel it when it's there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's if right. You do, you will be comforted. I mean, you don't right. really see any bumper stickers in any cars. But Say, I'm mourning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Or, or right. 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 blessed to mourn or happy to mourn. Right. Right. And, and, that, and that alludes to um, something Dr. Slough just spoke about, and it's, and it's uh, about the corporate side of, of, of prayer and, and, and the corporate side of, of coming together, um, not only for healing, um, but in whatever somebody's going through that's part of the body, um, whether it's mourning um, or, or any other emotion that, that, that we could be going through. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Um, the idea that when you're feeling guilt, you should be happy. You should be happy that you can feel guilt for those sins because if you're not feeling guilt, then you've kind of gotten to that reprobate mind yeah. where, where you're not even caring about it anymore. The fact that you feel guilty about your sin, you will be comforted. See, if you don't feel guilty about it, well, there's no comfort. There's no comfort. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. You're going to keep on sinning. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, it's not exactly. all of yeah. Instead of acknowledging it and fighting against it, you know. Amen. 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 And you know, lament is probably the, the 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 better word here because that it, it opens up, you know, the, the aspects that you guys were talking about. Because it, you know, when we when we tend to think of mourning, we tend to think of death and, and things of that nature. Um, but you know, we have to open up for for all those for all those things that we could be lamenting about. Um, Amen. And then you take that happen, and, and and then you know once you, and, and then once you ask for that forgiveness, 
that's where that is. That's, that's where that happiness comes in. Amen. Amen. Great comments. Great comments. Anybody else? All right. Um, verse 10 talks about being happy when you're persecuted. Is anybody's heart really focused on happiness when they're being persecuted? <laughs> you know? But then that's when we've got to take, we've got to take solace in the fact that whatever we're going through, whatever we're going through, God has got us on the other side. And that's where that, and, and, that, and that's where you just, that's where you just crack that smile and you just say, I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I've got to go through it. But I'm gonna be okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, some time back, I had anger in my foot, and it was not a really good time for me at all. I was just drifted a few days after um, in the workplace and at home. And so when my foot started getting better again and I could walk better again, I felt blessed. I felt happy because I, it was that experience that showed me to be more thankful mm -hmm. for what God was doing in me. Amen. And Thank you for I that. Talk to other people, you know, that have a similar situation. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because right. yeah. yeah. you went through that experience, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Right. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. I want to share something. Um, a colleague of mine who was in his late twenties, um, African American, was leading a Zoom meeting. You know, just don't have a Zoom meeting for people who can pack, and it had ideal states with three board members, administration, teacher staff, principal. And someone hacked into the meeting and began calling them all sorts of racial names. Oh, I mean, it was wow. just, they said it was awful. And they were first thinking it was one of the people in the meeting. So they were trying to figure out like who was who doing was. it. Um, but long story short, during the whole time, they said they couldn't believe like how calm he was mm. and just, he responded, but not really. Calm. Right. right. Um, he just responded and kept coming back to whatever um, they were focused on. And um, after it was over, he, you know, he just said that how he's never, you know, experienced it. He's heard of it, right. but never personally experienced it. And he was like, you know, it was only a God and Christ that just kept me just calm. Kept him again, still. calm and rooted. Said, I really don't even know what I said. It was just everybody else's response to what he was saying. And you know, even when it was over, and I was like, there's only Christ to conquer. So right. you did a you know, great job of staying right. on the side of Christ because Amen. no matter what you call the conflict, racism, socialism, whatever, right. it's still conflict. Right. It's usually over here, and Christ is on the other side. So, yeah, right. I just wanted to say that. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. The one yes. thing I'd like to add on top of that is just keep your faith in God because every time you're persecuted, that's just another jewel in your crown and in your spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So keep focused on God. Amen. Well, that's why Jesus Amen. said, you're not blessed when you're persecuted. You're blessed because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep rising. Keep rising on the devil. Amen. So, so we're talking about the persecution and And how difficult that is to be to, to stay focused and to, and to be happy when you're going through that, um, and going through you know going through life storms as we've heard here today. Um, but Jesus he tells us to be happy in all these situations, whether we're being whether we're mourning, whether we're being persecuted, um, and why, 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 why does he tell us to be happy in all of these situations? Look at verse twelve. Verse 12 says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Is that enough to be happy for? Great is your reward when you can walk in biblical happiness. What you may lack in your life because of the pandemic, 
Know that you can find happiness in God's word. Know that you can find happiness in the keeping of his commandments. Know that you can find happiness by hearing and hearing and hearing of his word. Know that you can find happiness when you stay focused on him. Verse 12 tells us the prophets before us were persecuted. But if we can remain happy, great is our reward. Great is our reward. Any questions? Any comments? So that's biblical happiness. You know, the, 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 we can interchange that word blessed um, and, and, and happy. And it, and it, and it, 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 it gives it gives you a it give, well, it gives me a, a a greater sense of confidence because now I know that you know I'm blessed but I'm blessed with a, a bigger smile on my face now because I'm happy because that because that's the end goal that's the end goal is to be happy in whatever that in whatever you're going through the good the bad and the ugly um the the new the new living translation translates uh blessed and happy and it says God blesses those God blesses those God blesses those um, okay go ahead yeah I'm ready what's the difference JR is asking uh -huh. friend of JR is yeah. asking what's the difference between happiness and joy happiness and joy uh, I don't think there's much I, I don't I don't think there's much um the question was asked, what is, is, what is the difference between happiness and joy? Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't think there's much. I don't think there's much difference in that. Um, joy may be more of an emotional, as, you know, has more of an emotional tone to it. Um, probably, but uh, Probably the benefit of being happy. Right. Yeah, a benefit of being happy is joy. Um, but uh, Yes, sir. It's hard to define the difference between the two, but in Galatians 5.22, it doesn't mention happiness, but it does mention joy as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Happiness uh, is what you get when you go to Six Flags Over Georgia or Carowinds. Mm -hmm. Joy right. is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The comment was made that joy is, is, is one of the fruits of the Spirit, um, as opposed to happiness that, that is not. Um, so, brother, I hope that answers your question. Um, any other questions? <clears throat> All right. Well, that's uh, that's what I, I have today. Um, happiness is is something that we're all struggling with, maybe um, on some levels, because we there's certain things we just can't do anymore. Um, you know, we've got these masks on and we've got these social distancing things going on and, and you know, we, we can't assemble in large crowds and, and whatever, whatever the changes that we've having to go through. But as we go throughout our day, you know, we want to just stay focused on what, what can keep us happy. We want to stay focused on the things of God so that we know as we walk and as we learn more and more each day that this too will pass. This too will pass. Things may never be the same again, but we'll still be happy. And we'll still have our joy. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, that's all I have today. If there's any more, oh, there's a question in the back. Yes? Amen. <laughs> Comment was made from brother uh, from brother Daniel of how he's been blessed since uh, he had an accident with his vehicle. He uh, he has not gone without without anything, um, and we missed him so much last week, uh, and, and that that sat in my spirit. So uh, so I decided to give him a call, and uh, and and, when, and once we found out, uh, we made sure that he made it here today. Um, 
Yes, ma'am. Yes. No, go ahead. appreciate that comment sister that was that was a, a a great summation because whatever word we pull out of here it's all going to point back to the word it's all going to point back to the word so um yes sir i just like to add uh, one on blessed uh, okay on blessed and a couple on uh, trusting okay yeah. <clears throat> You, you'll appreciate this one. It's in Psalms 34 8. You probably know it. But anyway, it says, Oh, taste and see <laughs> that the Lord is good. Yes. After being on your fast last week. Yes, okay. sir. <laughs> but the last part of it is, I'm going to change the word just like you did. Happy is the man that trusts in him. Yes. Amen. 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 And uh, when, when you said this, lesson or this sermon is going to be on happiness I thought of a couple in Proverbs and it's about happiness it says he that hath, handleth a matter wisely shall find good and whoso trusteth in the Lord happy is he happy is he amen, amen. and then in 2918 it says where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law, happy, happy is he. Happy is he. Amen. Amen. And that just and that just goes back to the point the sister made. The the, the word. It, it's it, it's the word. It, it's the word. And 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 as long as we're in this word, it conquers all. It truly conquers all. It heals us. It gives us happiness. It gives us the joy that we're looking for. It completes us, which is why we're required to study it. And that's why we're encouraged to study it. Because whatever you're looking for in your life, whatever that piece that's missing, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures and, you, and you'll find it. And you'll find it. Amen? Yes, sir. Corinthians 12, 26. And whether one member suffers, all members suffer with it. For one member to be honored, all members rejoice with it. We got to remember we're all one what? We're all one people. We're God's sons and daughters. And we should pull together in unity and love. Amen. Amen. Yep, that's right. 
Yeah. And 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 I think that happened with me and Mr. Daniel because I I was I didn't see him last week, and I I it it just it didn't sit right in my spirit, and I said I gotta call him. And then when I found out what happened, I called him, and you know I said I'm gonna make sure you're here today. I mean because you know I, I miss seeing that face back there. <laughs> but. That's right. That's right. I don't right. know any person in this room that wouldn't drop everything for any one of us if we had to, if we needed to. So even online, Amen. if you need something, you let us know. I mean, I think everybody in here's got both mine and Dr. Spiles' number. I know all of y'all have my email address and his email address, and you know we can get you Dr. Soul's information. If Amen. you need something, you let us know. Don't let us know. I mean, even the folks online. Right. Right. So we need to ask them. <laughs> um, I have one thing to offer. If anybody in the room, um, a family member gave me a brand new microwave in the box, never been opened, that she wanted to bless somebody with because she just not needed someone gave it to her. So if anybody needs it or knows someone that needs it, it's brand new, never been opened, but maybe okay. would like to give it to somebody or take it somewhere where somebody could use it, please let me know. Okay. Because it's in my car. And I was going to leave it Leave's in my car, right. um, but let me know. Okay. I have been trying. Trying. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, trying have to hear come, I haven't come across anyone yet. That right. So bless me, Lord. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Daniel, you got something? get that from you. We'll get that from you after. Um, thank the Lord. Yep. 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 Amen. Amen. That's how he works. That's exactly how he works. Amen. And, and he had the need. Amen. We had just, we just had a need met if you didn't uh, catch that conversation. Uh, a need met right here in the in the in our local fellowship here. Um, so yeah. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. And we'll, and we'll, we'll get that from you here after service. Um, but before we close, I, I do want to mention um, is one thing I want I wanted to mention uh, about uh, the school once again. Um, if you have uh, if you have not decided if you have uh, if you have not joined us uh, here at Ambassador Christian College, we would love to have you um, become a student to learn uh, more of these truths. And I also want to um, I want to highlight uh, Dr. Slough's commentaries. Um, that are given uh, via the radio and online. Um, for, for, for the people that are local, uh, on Saturdays, uh, AM 960 at 1230, that's WCRU. Uh, on Sundays, uh, for the international audience, we can do forwardbroadcasting.com, and that's at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Forwardbroadcasting.com, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And that's also uh, heard here locally on uh, AM 1460 and AM 14, uh, 1140. AM 1140, both at 1 p.m. 
Oh, and that's on Sunday, correct? Yeah. yeah that's now, on Sunday. Now, today, people out of the area can go to truthnetwork.com and click on the Charlotte station to hear it at 1230. Okay. 1230, you can go to truthnetwork.com. There's a drop down. So they're, they're all over, and you have to choose the Charlotte audience to get his program. And choose the Charlotte audience. So, so I, I wanted to I wanted to make those known so that we um, you, you can also support the ministry um, through through the hearing and the hearing of the word um, that uh, Dr. Slough will be giving um, as a, as a supplement uh, to Bible study. Amen. Amen. Well, there's if there's no more further questions or comments, uh, we're dismissed. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sabbath and be blessed, and we'll see you next week. Amen.